My Hero Academia, Season 6, Episode 18. Vestige of me that lives within one for all. Inside you. Right now. He must be talking with the previous wielders. I feel like Deku might have a really quick power scale up. Now's definitely the time. Let them be okay. This might be a spirit world episode. We need to have ourselves a talk before here we go. Wake up. Oh wow, everyone's just here. They're just here. This is very out in the open. I guess these are the people we haven't met yet. These are the people That's all might, right? For all before me. They're in my dreams again. The Am I missing something? I'm not seeing Gran Torino. But there's two empty chairs. Maybe one of them is Gran Torino and one of them is Deku. All much just observing in some weird in-between spirit form. Maybe because he's the closest link. This is so deliciously Avatar. Deku's past Avatars at a round table. I wonder how active of a role they'll play and how much guidance they'll give him. Now I'm just thinking in terms of Avatar. Will there be conflict between them? Will they disagree? Will they be urging Deku to make his own decisions? Or will they just be wholly united? At first, we could only talk to you when we found cracks in your consciousness. But we're not limited to those moments anymore. Clearly, now we're in the velvet room. It's now far easier for us to appear before you. Don't you oh, that kind of we'll backfired for the villains a little bit. If you know what I mean. Oh, I hadn't thought about that, but that's horribly <laughs> right. awkward. I you don't have a mouth in here. Or c clothes, for some reason. Now it feels like my mouth's starting to take shape. Hopefully his pants take shape, too. Episode 17, Deku and Shigaraki. Seems like we're going to get into the technicals of all for one, one for all, the relationship between the two, this unlocking power. Though, to a certain extent, I think some of the themes are already clear. There's a lot that goes into it simultaneously, and one of them is all for one's individual selfishness versus one for all's collective strength, respect for legacy, and carrying on the tradition of those that came before him, with an individual element to it as well, because just as each holder before Deku stood on the shoulders of those before them to raise sort of the world on their shoulders, Deku too will have to do the same, in a way that is uniquely Deku, that is unique to the needs of the time. It's something like being aligned with the forces of creation for the good, creating a unified strength that will probably always beat that kind of individual selfishness. My name's Hikage Shinomori, Not and I was one that. for all's fourth wielder. Number four. During the recent battle, you unintentionally tapped into my quirk and used it on the field. Mm. Spider sense? Yeah, super useful. Number four's a weird one. He got tired of everyday life, so he started living in seclusion like a hermit. <laughs> Huh, that's not what I expected from the holder of One For All. All Might didn't mention specifics in his notes. Actually, I'm pretty sure he crossed out the important details. Why? Oh yeah, there's something All Might's been hiding. I'm second only to Yagi in terms of users who lived with the court the longest. Wait, really? Damn. At 40? I always knew I didn't stand a chance of defeating him myself. So I figured the best thing I could do was improve the quirk for its next user. But as time huh, passed, that's interesting. Cracks began appearing on my body. Choice. I thought perhaps I wasn't training enough. Well, we know a little bit about that. This does not bode well for Deku, though he's no ordinary human. The natural causes that killed me were due to the multiple quirks inside my body. Oof, Deku. All I had the power of longer, and it was even stronger than when you wielded it. Right? Right, what about All Might? A and also, Gran Torino, he's like 5,000 years old. How is he the second? I'm misunderstanding something somewhere, probably. What was the intrinsic difference between Yagi and Shinomori? All Might was quirkless. Yes. Right, and so is Deku. With no quirk of his own, he's the only user who gained a vestige through One For All itself. This is definitely an episode for people who love the lore. <laughs> people who love the One For All technicals. But what exactly does it mean for All Might? Something still not revealed, something not right. Think of one's ability to hold a quirk as a glass. If it's not empty when they inherit One For All, it overflows eating away at your lifespan. Can't pour water into a full cup. By some twist of fate, this ability that's passed from person to person could only reach its true potential when wielded by someone born powerless. Makes Deku also perfect. Is that what you're trying to say? That was very difficult to understand, but I think he's just summarizing. You could pass it on to another quirkless person, but they're like an endangered species, few and far between these days. It's not something we could have known in the beginning. We learned this over generations of observation. Yeah, interesting that even the one for all users are, are figuring this out in real time. You get what this means, kid? You might be the last person who wields one for all. The last avatar, the last uh, one for all user. And now the real question, Izuku. Tell us, can you kill Tomura Shigaraki? Oh, here it is. 
That's not the mission, though. We can defeat him. This is what they want, isn't it? This is where they're, they're going with it. You thought he yeah, how do you respond as Deku? For help, didn't you? It's gonna take big guts to say what he actually feels you right feel now. Your emotions. If you could actually talk. So we know what was ringing through your head in that moment of desperation. The problem is, the rest of us had a completely different take on the situation. I thought it might go somewhere like this, yeah. At the heart of the quirk inside of you is a grit that refuses to yield to that monster, despite his strength. We believe that one for all is meant to destroy all for one completely. Very clear request there. I think this is a perfect direction to go. Just from what I gather from watching a lot of these shows, generally a consensus is just to go for the kill, right? Just eliminate the threat. And honestly, I, I can't really take a sense against that necessarily because it's really easy to say that from a position of safety and, you know, just wanting the, the highest ideal and wanting the optimal resolution when the fact is the characters of this world are facing annihilation, basically. So it's not a decision to be made lightly. At the same time, though, just thinking about what it means and I guess specifically what it means to me, there's a much greater victory to be had in saving Shigaraki. Part because I think him being discarded, him being nothing, people being expendable in society is largely what created the problems of the show in the first place. Outside of that though, this whole one for all mechanic borrows heavily on the idea of legacy, of each person being born into what they are with the legacy of the past and both honoring that, not discarding the things that make them great, not forgetting about the people who fought really hard and dedicated their whole lives, sacrificed a tremendous amount to build the next rung of the ladder for the next generation to come and stand on, which then perhaps gives them a responsibility to build the next one even better, but yet it's not blind obedience, it's not blind adherence to legacy, it's not blind adherence to tradition, because life is an evolutionary growing adaptive process, and no one circumstance anyone's born into is going to be exactly like the previous. So it's it's both at once, it's like these two warring sides. And that's more thrilling to me when you think about it, because that creates the destiny of a person, that creates the adventure in a sense, is that each person has to fight for that themselves and what that means. So the fact that Deku is, I mean, clearly they're all in the, all allies. They're all united in, in a general goal, which I would argue is for the good. But it will mean so much more if it's a conscious choice from Deku in a way that is unique both to Deku and to the world Deku lives in and to following his instinct honestly. A bigger question for me is what happens to All for One? Because he's this evil force and yeah, we could kill him too, right? We can separate between Shigaraki and All for One, I think, to a certain extent. But just something came up in my mind when they were saying it's one for all's response responsibility to destroy all for one that made me think maybe there's something more to it that would connect to the lore for example, harmonizing the two. Maybe Deku could be the one to absorb all for one's power rather than the other way around. I can't fully put my finger on it, but that would close some kind of loop. It would make this power whole and also would make Deku godlike. The rift between the two brothers that created the rift between the two powers is also an ideological rift. There's something about this whole thing that is connected to some fundamental process of the, of the universe. And it's not a matter of one or the other. The show has been very nuanced about that. There might be an even higher victory that I haven't even considered yet. I know it's not fair to tell you this after explaining you can't abandon your power. But Tamara Shigaraki is my grandson. Yeah, she's not making this decision lightly. Yeah, she bears a heavy burden. If that monster manages to fully awaken, no one will be able to stop him. You can't make him see reason or offer him forgiveness. Yeah, I don't want to make light of their concerns. It's not unreasonable what they're saying. Ask yourself. In the end, will you have the resolve necessary to kill him? It has a lot of weight coming from her. You looked like he was in trouble. You know, that's what it felt like. I respect him for speaking his mind. Deep in the depths of that hatred, I could sense a lost child crying. I fought a lot of people since I received this power. I never found out why they ended up becoming villains. What caused all their anger? Speaking of an awakening, damn. Maybe things would have been different. Gentle criminal turned out to be huge for Deku's growth. One for all isn't a power meant to do harm. It's a power meant to save. Damn. That's something I learned <laughs> from All Might. Look at this dude. Even if it started as a way to destroy your brother. It's evolved into something else thanks to what And he gets done. his voice in full clarity. One for all has taken on another purpose in this world. Very symbolic. <laughs> all Might's ghost just bawling. Deku's not making light of this either. And that's why we'll follow your lead. Oh, that's that's great. I'm so happy. Hard for me to listen to what Deku's saying was passed on to you two. and not be somewhat oh convinced. God. But then he has to actually do it. He has to do it correctly. You two better start helping out. You can't just ignore us. We need your cooperation to unleash one for all's full potential. Are we going to get all the powers? That'd be pretty I amazing. I know what you're saying, but I can feel the conversation. He's in there. Exact details may be hazy, but the information is flowing through me. That's exactly how I feel. 
It's lazy, the specifics, but I get the feeling something important has happened. You should be conscious soon, but he's not the only reason you're here. This is about Midoriya, and one for all. Yeah, secret's pretty much out. I'm trying to get the full picture. Because from now on, we're not just fighting villains. We are also battling public sentiment. I'm glad Deku is not alone in this. I thought it was going to be somewhat of a rogue thing, but it seems like it's going to be more of a rogue squad. I feel like this is going to come down to a few people. It's going to be a few people who are just actually the, the next level ultimate heroes. And I've been waiting for something like this for so long because this is kind of a true value test of who they are since there's not really as much infrastructure in place. It was pretty lucky for them for a long time that being good for the most part was in alignment with the law structures, but that's not always the case right so now we get to see who they really are unchained and i can take a guess you know pretty much know at least i think so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out you must keep this secret to ensure your own well-being true but also for the safety of the world things have changed so much so quickly you got that right and these two aren't the types to back down you got that right despite reports i don't think everyone wants to blame the pros they want to believe heroes have integrity to feel their protectors did nothing wrong. They need something to believe in more than ever now. Darby is indeed my oldest son, Toya Todoroki. I can't deny what he spoke is the truth. Oh man, this takes a lot of guts, speaking of which, for Endeavor. This whole sad life just made public. Oh man, that's the end of his pro career. Oh no, oh no, that was such a pointed, pointed parody. The internet critic judging things from the safety of their dens. No ambiguity there. People relishing in the downfall of others. You're saying that he didn't lie, but he did! He's right. Best Genus is alive, which refutes Dobby's claims that Hawks murdered him. Yeah! Get your story straight! I'm just, just waiting to jump down his throat. My father's identity. How I killed a desperate villain who was running away. That's all true. I apologize for hiding the Let's truth be about honest. my origin. It's time. I know now that it was a mistake. Let's bring it all out into the light. Do you really think apologizing and saying you feel bad fixes anything? It was the villains who did this, sure, but the only reason they were able to wreak havoc on such a scale is because of your mistakes! If we stood up here crying and carrying on, would that make your mother better? Huh? Oh! As number one, that's how I will atone for my sins. But right now, there are fewer heroes in the field. Best genius all neck, that collar. We'd like to announce that starting today, UA High and other schools with hero courses will be designated as emergency shelters. There should be plenty of space in these facilities for anyone who is scared or seeking protection. Now everyone can be running through these halls, but probably not with smiles on their faces. I respect this a great deal, the three of them standing up here. The lady is saying that they're not doing anything, but my reaction to that is there's two things to keep in mind. One of them is it's always easy to blame the people who you thought were there to deal with these things. And that's fair to an extent. And this might sound obvious to say, but I feel like it's not really practiced enough. The bulk of the, the criticism, the bulk of this hatred should be aimed at the people or things that caused this in the first place. You're always at a disadvantage when you're reacting to things. And life is so unbelievably complex. In a sense, you're always playing catch up. You can't prevent terrible things from happening completely. A lot of what you're going to be doing is just doing your best in each given moment to patch things things, heal damage as it emerges, which is what they're trying to do. And secondly, and notably, I think the honesty, the fact that they're informing the public of exactly what happened, including their wrongdoing, is itself something they're doing that's great, that will have important, significant changes for society. There's this idea that you should shield people from things, but it underestimates people a little bit, in my opinion, and it also makes kind of a somewhat arrogant assumption that people can't handle it. You know, people are smarter than I think a lot of people give them credit for. You respect people's agency and their individuality and their right to make their own choices. And the more information they have, the better informed choices they can make. Any kind of lie creates distortion, the effects of which are bigger than I think we typically imagine. If a hero is someone people know they can call on when they need help, then the heroes disappeared that day. Even so, there are those still willing to fight. That's what I'm saying, the small crew, the small core crew of Ultra Heroes. When Endeavor was asked about One for All, he said he knew nothing about it. So much for transparency. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Fair enough. All for One? The villains are after him? Doesn't make any sense. I'm glad they get clued in though. Uraraka, thank you. So much. It's time for you and the rest of our class to know everything. He wrote individual letters too, putting a lot of trust in them, and which the they deserve. The last thing I want to do is put others in danger. I really doubt and they're going to sit idly by though. Me. That's their choice to make. Thank you. And goodbye. Doubt it. <laughs> this is a class full of people who are just meddlers at heart. 
We can't sit still. If heroes are those who don't hesitate to take the hardest path, then who will be willing to follow them when they're suffering? In April, Deku left our Hero Academy. It's like Hermione and Ron chasing after Harry. That's my prediction. There he is. There's the roguish looking Deku. Looks like a huge villain. Fast forwarded a little bit. This is the start of a new arc. I don't know what the hell that said, but I think it's something begins. The counterattack. It's gonna be a hard road. Oh man, it's gonna be so great. I can't wait to see Deku and his hero allies and what they're able to do. This kind of rogue fight that they're embarking on. Though I think that the class of UA will join too, like I said. There's no way they just leave Deku to his own devices. They're gonna pull their weight. I'm also excited to see what happens with society. I think it's a good, like a good direction for them in the midst of a terrible tragedy because it's a wake up call and there's no like leaning on the heroes totally. They have to do their part. They have to be responsible partly for their own lives or making their own choices. It could go a lot of different ways, but one way it could go is bringing people together. Uh, although right now it seems like the initial responses trying to tear things down and point fingers i hesitate to talk about this because i never really want to go into specific things about world events or politics or anything like that but to keep it kind of general as a lot of you know i live in korea there was recently a, a big tragedy here in the month of october and i think this has softened somewhat since then from what i gather but the initial response was like looking for heads to roll you know it was one of who can we point fingers at who's to blame who can we take our sadness out on and there were definitely things that could have been done better right there were definitely failings people who didn't take certain things into account but for me, it's kind of like you can address those things. You can make the points you want to make, especially if they're useful and constructive towards making things better, preventing tragedies in the future. At the same time, I think the bulk of your understanding about that incident has to be the fact that it was largely an accident. It was not malevolence. It wasn't malice. It was lack of foresight, perhaps over optimism. Nobody wanted it to happen. No one directly caused it. It was a combination of factors that got out of hand. And I think it's important to keep that in mind simultaneously with the criticism. Nevertheless, there were a lot of scapegoats and there was a lot of tragedy that followed after the event due to that scapegoating. In this show, okay, you can say the heroes let this happen. At the same time, the bulk of it has to be generated towards the evil of All for One and Shigaraki and the villain crew. They are the, they are the ones. It wasn't the heroes who failed to stop the whole thing from happening. There's an asymmetry of information as well because the public didn't see the extent of what we saw of heroes dying for the cause and putting everything on the line just to stop it while it was happening, scrambling to adapt to this insane set of circumstances. A little bit of like maturation is in order. And I think if that goes well, if people can have Hold that space in their hearts and be a little more open nuanced then that might have the effect of bringing them together making society stronger and making things harder for the villains actually aside from that my favorite part of the episode i think besides the excitement of what's to come is deku's speech to his predecessors it was pretty magical for me and kind of what i expect from deku but powerful to see it's no easy task that he faces it's no easy thing to stand up to that room of people and speak your mind to somewhat contradict them but that's also exactly the thing that makes them have faith in deku it's exactly what makes deku such an amazing person and it's probably exactly why i think he's going to be successful in saving shigaraki